All right, let's take a look at the M16 anti-aircraft mobile half-track with the uh, M45 quad 50 cal in the back turret manned by one soldier and you can have a driver and somebody in the passenger seat. Let's take at a look at its card here. We see that it does indeed have the four times 50 cal. Its armor is 8 in the editor. Crew of 3, speed of 35, so it can move um, fairly fast, but it doesn't maneuver that uh, good considering it's a, a half track and you have some track in the back, so it's not going to be turning around really quick. And So you have to be aware that you want to put it in place and then you want to track your aircraft. So Let's take a look at its inventory. We can see that it has its 50 caliber shells, uh, 2,500. It has a gas can and a repair kit. Let's switch quick to the German side, which I have this uh, BF-109. Let's have him move into a position about here. So he's going to just circle around. And the M16 in the game is Basically, it's a, a direct control unit where it, it may attack, attack some ground units, but generally it's not going to attack air uh, units on its own. So you want to go in direct control, and we'll do that. Its rotation speed of the turret isn't that fast, but the devastation of the quad 50 cals makes up for it if you do get on target. And you want to lead the target slightly. and take the shot. That may have been slightly out of range. We'll see what happens here. And its reload time is a bit long, so... We did get a good hit. Now if you hit the target, more than likely it will go down because of the quad 50. So that's a demonstration of how to use it in the game. You can also go in direct control and of course hit ground targets. Very effective. Very effective against small uh, uh, targets and uh, light vehicles, houses, uh, troops in the field. Um, so very effective at small ground targets, light ground targets, and of course aircraft when you go in direct control. So in the next uh, little segment of this video, we will take it in a live uh, map situation where we will use it and demonstrate it. So here we are in the battlefield. We have our M16. Uh, the situation is uh, probable German aggression today. Uh, our intel says they might be making a move over the bridge. And it looks like from uh, the captain's binoculars, it looks like they are indeed getting ready to move across the bridge. So we are on high alert. Our tasking for today is twofold. Uh, aircraft number one and small targets of opportunity on the ground our range is 150 game meters so small targets on the ground aircraft number one so we're gonna kick off the battle scene here we may want to get our vehicle into a slightly better posture for possible situation coming up. Even though we do have some sandbag protection set up for us, we're going to turn the vehicle around a little bit. Now, it being a half track, it's a little bit more difficult than normal to just rotate it. But that should be sufficient, and we'll back it up. Back it up a little more. That'll do the trick here. Alright, go in direct control. Take a look, make sure the weapon's rotating well. Its rotation speed is slow, as you can see here. It's not the fastest rotation speed. And then it has to rotate up. So in direct control we get our turret up and in position. 
for the likely attack. And if we go here, we can uh, grab this and get the Germans' attention with an F-6 ground attack on this likely uh, gun emplacement here. And we'll have him move back. Oh! Unfortunately for our side, they had what looks to be an 88 exactly rotated in position. So, that kicks off the battle. Unfortunately, uh, not in a good way for us, but that is only the beginning. Now, we'll be able to kill anything on the ground right up to... Now, we can also move in direct control mode, but it looks like 150 game meters. So, right up into here, we're deadly anywhere up here if German troops move up here. So, now we can also obviously move around. So, in direct control, not only can you have your turret available, but you can use the ASWD keys to move around while you're in direct control moving your turret around. So, with a little practice. We'll get our troops to move up here, our, our M16. We do see we're going to back it up. Now the tricky part is because the M16 has to be direct controlled and it has a very slow turn rate, you pretty much have to be ready for an aircraft coming in. So. You have to kind of decide if you want, you know, what, how you want to uh, play. So I think what we're going to do is we'll wait here, and uh, if we do see ground targets of opportunity, we will attack. Other than that, we will be waiting for an aircraft. Now it's extra difficult because of the. The small amount of preparation time you get to lock on a view distance, but it can be done. You see uh, German forces moving up. They're out of our current range of this weapon. More than likely they will have German troops moving up with them. able to rotate on that vehicle, on that uh, aircraft. Get one German there. Two Germans. The enemy moves up with their light armor. To we are now have three. Those small vehicles, we could at least track them, but they're out of our range. We could attempt to move up slowly. Reload time is slow. We have to be aware of that. Now have four kills on the ground. Five. So it is effective for uh, slowing down. Ground forces here. 
here. So. Now we're lightly armored, so we have to be very careful of our position in the battle here. We're not meant to be a front line force. Seven kills. Reload. So we'll go look up the battlefield here while the vehicle reloads. We have seven kills of Germans on the ground here as they were moving up into these positions. So somewhat effective. I do hear a plane. So the M16 in the in the game, in the editor, if we as effective as a ground troop, but as far as being able to uh, destroy incoming aircraft quickly, you probably want to use a bow force or um, other stationary pieces of equipment. I think how this would uh, really work well is for what it's doing here is ground troop suppression. But also, if you have low-flying um, if you have low-flying aircraft, I believe it would also play a role. See here, by the time we get rotated around, we're not able to get shots. So I would say, right now, our role is to be on the ground here to suppress enemy movement. And one helpful idea is to look where the yellow dots are. We just, uh, that's where our other soldiers and commanders are looking on the battlefield. So anytime you see like white, a yellow dot here, it's out of range, but we I know our commanders and our uh, troops are targeting that area wherever, so. And here I'll take a shot tracking this vehicle. Now that's a much too big of a target, but it looks to be tracked. I don't know if that was us or somebody else that tracked it. Slightly low, but we're trying to record all this in HD. So. We have nine ground kills. Possibly tracked a few vehicles. Generally suppressing the entire area. As we reload again. Let's take a look at the battlefield here. A 
we are able to uh, hold back the Germans. They don't. They don't. They're not looking at the M16 as a direct threat. They are. They have other higher priorities, so that allows us to do what we need to do as suppressing their ground movement. We have 11 ground kills. And another thing that what it's really good at is if a larger, let's try to get this air. We we're actually able to get some shots on that plane there. But what it's really good at is if a larger uh, field gun, anti-tank gun, actually uh, takes out a tank when the troops dismount, let's go for this plane. When the troops dismount, we have a good chance of destroying the troops there. No, we missed. We weren't able to get them. A little bit too slow for incoming planes in this. And that may hurt. Oh, we're out of the blast range there. So we'll go with the ground roll for now. And since we're not a major threat, uh, we're not like a heavy tank or something, we're not looked upon and targeted as much. That may hurt. But as troops dismount their destroyed vehicles, uh, we have a very, a very good chance at taking them out. We're in reload mode right now. We're under a bit of pressure. We may want to retreat as we reload. Move up. see some enemy over here. Are able to get one, three of them as they were moving up behind those tanks. Try to tr track this. Uh, what that is? It's a panther four, maybe? No, it's a jag panther. So an elephant. Let's see if we can track it. It just causes some trouble here. Shake it up a little bit, while well, maybe our other forces can take it out. Some of our other forces are now heating it up a little bit for them. So we continue to play our role, our secondary role. Targets of opportunity on the ground. Looks like there was some dismounts. We killed two dismounts from that uh, elephant. Tank destroyer over there. 16 kills so far. We're reloading. So I think this gives you a pretty good idea if we uh, stop the simulation now. It gives you a pretty good idea of the role it can play. Um, not so. It's not that good at 
uh, fast attacking aircraft. But if you were to move it behind the lines as aircraft attacking aircraft were looping and if they loiter around the area, the M16 crew would be able to get on target and take them down if, uh, if an aircraft was loitering. But when they're coming in and attacking straight over like that, it's probably you don't want to uh, use the M16 for the aircraft in that situation. But it is a very effective ground suppression, um, light armor, troops, anybody moving forward on the ground. It really messes things up for the advancing forces. We were able to get 16 uh, troop kills as the Germans tried to push up, as tanks were stopped, they, uh, their crew dismounted and we were able to uh, really mess up those crews so they could not uh, repair the vehicles. So that's a focused look at the M16 uh, quad 50 cal half track vehicle. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe. Uh, let's get these videos so that some people can see them and uh, learn and get some help in the editor and as they play Assault Squad 2.